Well, let's talk a little bit more about these tariff discussions with Husuk Lee Makiyama, director of the European Centre for International Political Economy. Welcome back to the programme. Uh, good to see you. Thank you very much. Um, so China and the EU are going to talk. What do you think these discussions will focus on and what would a successful negotiation look like for each side? Well, um, the truth of the matter is that uh, EU may not be 100% aligned when it comes to these tariffs. Of course, there are countries like France and Italy and Spain who are actually keen on putting some leverage or um, pressure on China. But it may not necessarily be that they actually want to see a tariff. They actually want to see other kind of concessions from the Chinese side, including more investment, foreign direct investment into new plants, in preferably in their own country, of course, but also some transfer of technology and also better market access inside China. And Germany has been quite critical of these tariffs. Uh, how does that reflect the broader China-EU relations? Well, Germany has been something of a, um, a latecomer to this party because they have been very busy and uh, occupied with internal issues, not least the, the, the dwindling uh, um, popularity rate of uh, Chancellor Olaf Scholz had may play into something into this as well. Um, and it's not on. It's actually in the last. Uh, two, three weeks that uh, Germany has actually woken up and realized that this could actually hurt the, the future sales prospects of major companies like Volkswagen, who sell almost a million cars per year in China, compared to if you look at BYD, the Chinese brand, who sells maybe three, 4,000 cars in Europe per year. And so just to expand on that, what are the potential ramifications uh, of tariffs for both EU and China in the electric vehicle market in particular? What kind of impact could it have on consumers and businesses? Truth be told, the direct impact is very, very small. Uh, Chinese uh, brands, actually, Chinese market don't actually sell that many cars in Europe. Uh, among the 10 million cars that are sold in Europe every year, around 0.1% are sold by BUID, NIO, and other Chinese marks that we've uh, come to appreciate. But the truth of the matter is that the majority of the sales that come from uh, China is actually Teslas. Mm. And so half of the market is actually held by Tesla. So this is just as much a beef between U uh, Europe, and, um, Europe and China. It is also something of a beef between U.S. shareholders and the European consumers. Mm -hmm. Yes, and on the American side of things, the U.S. has imposed even higher tariffs on Chinese electric vehicles. How do you see the EU's approach differing from the U.S., and what lessons could it learn from the U.S.-China trade dynamics? And, of course, we're just hearing that Canada potentially is considering measures including tariffs. Oh, I'm pretty sure that there are many people who are all of this 100% tariff that the Biden administration has imposed. And... Uh, and they have been imposed on the grounds of non-compliance with international rules on a presidential executive order. And these are legal instruments that are actually not available in Europe. And in Europe, these uh, countervailing duties against Chinese subsidies have to be agreed among the member states. Uh, there has been investigation. And if the investigation actually don't hold up to a decent legal and technical standard, China will, I'm pretty sure, uh, challenge them in court. And they have a propensity to win, even in European courts. This is perhaps a big difference between the legal basis that has been deployed by United States which is somewhat uh, more arbitrary than the European system that is 100% under rule of law. Osik, Lee Makiyama, always great to get your analysis. Thank you so much for your time. We really appreciate it. Thank you.